Last week on Humble Mind, my community, we had a really, really interesting conversation with um, someone called Dr. Alexander Zak, who is uh, a thought leader, an advisor, really, really smart guy. And uh, he's also a professor at MIT and the University of Southern California. And he visited our group and we were talking about imposter syndrome. Um, and he shared three really, really great tools uh, that I thought would be worth talking about when it comes to understanding what it is, understanding what your approach to it can be, to be able to not let it take over your mind chatter, your decision making and how you feel about yourself, but also to kind of find a way to deal with it and to embrace who you are and to embrace um, the situation for what it is. When you're looking at imposter syndrome, it's you know it's that feeling of that 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 sort of voice behind you whispering into your ear, saying that you're a fraud. That wherever you are, for what you've done, what you've now achieved, it's all a lie, and you're about to have the curtain called on you. Um, the show's up, the game is up. You're about to be found out, and you don't deserve what you've now achieved, especially if you've worked hard for it. And so. It's such a crazy sort of irrational way to think, isn't it? And it's easy to diagnose in other people, but it's also the kind of thing that's so universal that when you feel it in yourself and in your own mind and how, you, how you're put together, it's the kind of thing that you can't help but feel as well, especially if it's completely unjustified, which almost always it is, right? So when you're faced with this and when you're thinking, okay, I'm starting to feel that I'm an imposter of some kind and that I am really not cut out for this or that I don't deserve this or I shouldn't be here. I'm not the right person to be able to grow this company or to achieve those sales or to be the right partner to my wife or my, you know, my kids in this relationship, whatever that might be, the way that it starts to um, you know, whisper to us, there are three things that we can remember. The first is to realize that optimism and staying optimistic is a duty, is a responsibility that we have to ourselves. Now, this, was, this is kind of based out of Stoic philosophy, but it was an eye-opener for me when, when Dr. Zach mentioned this because, you know, often we think that optimism is something that is like kind of, you know, you know somebody can be too optimistic, they can, you know, too much positive talk, too much smiling, too much, how are you? I'm great, you know, but that's kind of directionless optimism. What we're talking about specifically here is the realizing the possibility that no matter how bad a situation is, no matter how it feels, no matter how much the, you know, the, the odds feel stacked against you, the, there's always a reason to feel that there's a possibility of hope, that there's another way out and that the only way that they that, that thing becomes a reality, that that possibility actually becomes what happens, is to remain optimistic, is to, is to think that there's actually, there's possibility for hope here. There's the possibility of things playing differently, playing out differently. The second is that it's a lot easier to go into difficult situations or a situation where you feel like, I really shouldn't be here, I'm not qualified, and to sort of defend against that voice and maybe other people's voices as well, the criticism you might get, when you know that you are being guided by a purpose, a set of values, a reason for being, a reason why you get up in the morning. Perhaps it's something spiritual or supernatural. Perhaps it's um, something that you keep to yourself as a commitment. You want to help people. You want to be able to go into every situation making things better. You want to build a product because it's going to help certain people. And letting that become the guiding, the North Star, the guiding light that then dictates your actions, dictates the reason why you get up in the morning. It's a lot easier to be able to counter the feeling or the, 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 that irrational sense of, I'm, you know, I'm really not qualified for this. I shouldn't be here. I'm, I'm a fraud. When you know that what got you there is the purpose that drives you every day. So embracing that and embracing it in your identity, the purpose-based identity of you as a person, how you show up every day, 
is a really powerful way to, to counter that, to be able to spot when that imposter's voice starts to come up. So that was a game changer, I think. And then number three, no matter how you got there, no matter how unqualified you may be on paper, perhaps there really was another better person who could be there. The truth of the matter is that they're not there right now. And you are. You have done the best you can with the things you had, with the education you had, with the resources you had, at the time, at that place, with those people. There might be better options, but they're not there. You are. And so, because of that, practically, it calls out the best from your toolkit. It calls out the best from you. Even if on paper it isn't the best option, but you're the option right now. You're there. And so, the only next step is to be able to just trust. Trust. And trust in yourself that you can, that you do have it within you to move ahead and to move past that nagging, irrational voice to actually do what you probably can do and didn't know you could do if you were still in your comfort zone. Dr. Zach often talked about being on the edge of chaos, you know, this feeling that you're stretched. And that feeling, you know, that stretching feeling, ah, I don't know if I can do this. Ah, I don't know if I have that ability. I'm not sure if this is something that I can do. That stretching feeling is you leaving that comfort zone. It's moving out. It's stepping out of that circle. And imposter syndrome, if you think about it, is another sign. It's the same thing. It's you being able to move past that voice, which is telling you, you are now leaving the comfort zone. What's going on? Things are now going to be uncertain. You move past that. And you realize that, well, actually, it's okay to be stretched because that puts me in a problem-solving mindset. It puts me in a resource state, which is how he called it, which is great. Then you're a lot more amenable to using different methods, to thinking creatively, to putting your skills together in new combinations, to asking different questions, to working in a different way that maybe you wouldn't have considered if you were still unstretched, if you were still in your box, right? So these are amazing thoughts that I wanted to share with you and the kinds of things that we're covering in Humble Mind um, and the kinds of conversations, the great conversations we're having amongst the community. And, and last week's one about imposter syndrome really just spoke to me, especially around these three things, the optimism as a responsibility, embracing a purpose-based identity, and just trusting because you're the best option that everyone has there on the day with what they have at that time. And once you think about it like that and just take a few breaths and breathe out, it's a lot easier to deal with that nagging voice because you're there and now you're going to do the best job you can. <laughs>